Yeah, so I hope now my screen would be visible. So let me recapitulate what we learned in the last session. Okay. So uh, first we saw equivalent circuit based on that, right? Uh, based on that, we try to find out the uh, air gap power and uh, losses. Uh, what are the power flow in induction motor? Uh, first, we will have some input power in motor, any motor, and there will be certain stator losses, flow loss, proper loss, and after that, uh, air gap power will be developed. And after the air gap power, there will be rotor copper losses and core losses. Then, you know, uh, peak converter is what? Uh, power converted from electrical to mechanical domain. And if you eliminate frictional and windage losses from them, then you will get SAT power or output power. So. This mechanical power is nothing but uh, induced torque into a rotor speed, right? So uh, let us uh, see what happens next, right? So uh, next thing we want to discuss today is our, you know, Theonin equivalent circuit of inductor motor that will be really helpful in solving many problems. Uh, so just let me start with that. So we have the same equivalent circuit. This equivalent circuit, we have the same equivalent circuit. And this approach of equivalent circuit says that, uh, you know, uh, our uh, parallel branches resistance RC is not that much significant. So it would be convenient to eliminate this RC. And that will help us in simplifying the Theonin equivalent circuit. And that will give you approximately equivalent value of torque and power and current. So uh, I will draw a circuit without any uh, parallel resistance or core loss component of resistance. So let me yeah, so the circuit is something like this. And after that, uh, after explaining these concepts, we will solve you know, uh, four or five gate, gate problems, which will be easily solved on based on these concepts. So basically, we do not want to deal with a stator components. So that is why we are simplifying our uh, equivalent circuit with only two elements, one voltage and one resistance and one reactance. So that is our purpose to do this. So total resistance on the rotor side is, you know, R2 by S. And the resistance, reactance is JX2. Here, rotor current will flow, which is responsible for torque and power. And this is JXN, we can say. This is JX1, uh, primary leakage reactance. And this is R1. Now, this is phase related. So, uh, to compute, even in, we want voltage at this node. And this node voltage we are calling VTH. So if you ignore or if you make the circuit open uh, after this node, then you can easily apply voltage division rule and that will be equal to, VTH will be equal to V5 into Jx10 divided by R1 plus Jx1 plus Xn. Okay, Till so far so good. Now, Vth is fine. Next is Jth. Then only we can, you know, represent all these components with a simple voltage and impedance. Right. So for that purpose, I want to calculate ZTH. ZTH will be, if you see, uh, from for ZTH calculation, what you need to do, we need to sort this thing, and then we can compute, or we can see that the XM is parallel with a stator impedance. 
so uh, xm is parallel with z1 right so j x m into i1 plus j x1 divided by j x m plus r1 plus j x1 so this is your j t h uh, sir, here, here we are not considered uh, RC. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I stated uh, before the introduction that RC we have to ignore if we want simplified version of you know computation. If you consider RC, then these calculations will be way complex, and RC is anyway very small. So the current flows in that section will be very small. So you can ignore them. Okay. It okay, is very, uh, you know, general practice. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. So, R1 plus Jx1 into Jxm divided by R1 plus Jx1 plus Xm. We can write. So, this is our Jth value. And further, we will take some more assumption which will further simplify our calculations, right? So this is VTH and JTH. Now we want to represent our circuit, which was initially this circuit, right? Now we want to represent this circuit in much simpler way. So there will be one voltage source, VTH. RTH. JXTH. And JH2 was there as it is. And the rotor resistance that is R2 by S. Okay. Now circuit is very simple. Now you can easily calculate this rotor current I2. And you will get all the parameters air gap power I2 square R2 by S. Right? Mechanical power. So uh, that was our purpose to do that. And further we can approximate it. Right. Uh, what we can do here that this parallel branch you know, except magnetizing which reactance value is maximum in this circuit can you let me know if i ask you in this circuit in, in this initial circuit which reactance value is will be maximum xm xm absolutely correct so xm is the highest value so what we can do, we can here assume that Xm is way, way higher than X1. Okay. I hope it will not create any issue. Also, we can assume Xm value will be much, much higher than R1. Why? Because R1 and X1, they are leakage reactants and resistances, right? So leakage reactance values or leakage impedance values are way smaller than magnetizing inductance. So if we say that, you know, we can, we want to ignore this R1 and X1 in compared to Xm, would that be an appropriate assumption? So I hope it would be appropriate. It will not create any much, you know, inaccuracy in calculation so but what it will do after elimination of these stator reactances and resistances you will you know your thermal voltage will be directly equal to what v5 because if you eliminate them jxm and jxm will be cancelled out so vth will be directly whatever you applied in the input side you do not need to filter it in at some other states like we were calculating in between uh, across xm now whatever is applied voltage we can say that that voltage is directly reflected to magnetizing impedance or magnetizing inductance and that voltage will act as our input and we will have further simplified circuit let me show you what it will look like VTH we can say is equal to V1 and we are ignoring you know R1 and X1 compared to XM so our JTH will also be modified right 
so uh, first let me uh, break it down jth in real and imaginary so that jta will be having two components one for resistance and one for reactance so if i break it jth jth is nothing but rth plus jx and it was jxm into r1 plus jx1 divided by r1 plus j x1 plus x1 okay now we are assuming that xm is higher than r1 and x1 so we can remove them and this J, jxm and jxm will be cancelled out so now jth again will end up with r1 plus jxm so it means fth will be x1 and rth will be r1 i hope you are following right if any doubt is there you can ask me anytime so if we are done with this now what we can say we can draw a very simple equivalent circuit with whatever supply is provided to the motor v1 right and jx1 that is a stator leakage reactance only r1 that is a stator resistance and we do not need to you know draw a magnetizing inductance we can straight away go ahead with rotor side parameters and it will be jx2 and r2 by s okay and now this current will be flowing that we can call i2 or rotor current which is very important thing so the purpose behind solving or simplifying this circuit was to find out the current very easily as soon as we see the parameters of input we can be able to find out the output side parameters so i2 we can say that v1 divided by r1 plus r2 by s plus j x1 plus x2 so this is your current which is flowing in the circuit this is phase current right because we are taking all the uh, equivalent circuit in phase parameters air gap param once you calculate i2 this is this will be still in complex form so for finding out the magnitude what you can do you can get r1 plus r2 by s square plus x1 plus x2 square so this expression will give you the magnitude of the rotor current now with this current i want to find out the air gap power i hope you recall air gap power what is the expression of air gap power in terms of current and resistance only three times i2 i2 square yeah go ahead r2 r2 by s right because r2 if you write only r2 then it will be your proper loss so r2 by s it was the air gap power okay. huh. now we have the value of i2 we can write air gap power because you will be given x voltages so 3 v1 square if you plug in this value of i2 here if you plug in this value of i2 here you will get 3 v1 square into r2 by s which is very famous expression most of the graduates just remember it by heart but you do not need to recall you just need to you know know the equivalent circuit and once you draw this equivalent circuit you will be able to find out the current and simply air gap power is nothing but 3 i2 square r2 by s so just plug in the value of i2 here so you will get 
R1 plus R2 by S square plus X1 plus X2 square. Great. So here we will not have any under root because of course uh, due to I2 square. So this is very famous expression. Okay. And uh, in many textbooks further, if you ignore the stator side parameters, then it will be very simple that we will see in a couple of minutes. So this is our air gap power. Now, I hope you remember the expression of induced torque. If you have air gap, uh, I told in the last session that if you have to find out induced torque value, there are two ways. Either you can compute it from, you know, converted power from electrical to, man, uh, electrical to mechanical divided by rotor speed. Otherwise, air gap power. Air gap power divided by uh, oh speed. Exactly. Speed. Yeah. So there are two ways. Now we can, we have easily found out the air gap power. So we will go ahead with this expression. Okay. So induced torque will be, you know, uh, air gap power is this one, right? And we just need to divide it by omega s. So the expression of induced torque will be same to air gap power, three v one square r two by s divided by omega s into R1 plus R2 by S square plus X1 plus X2 square. Okay, so uh, this is the expression of induced torque. Here, you know, generally candidates have many confusion whether this omega comes in the denominator. Will it be always rotor speed or synchronous speed? So the straightforward solution is, it, as I stated in the last session as well, that if you are calculating induced torque from air gap power, you have to take this value as a synchronous speed. If you are going with you know converted power, which is another way of finding the power, then you can see. But it is most important expression and it is you know widely used. Why? Because uh, this is very simple equivalent circuit. And from this circuit, you will be able to find out the rotor current and that rotor current into R2 by S will give you the air gap power. Okay, I hope it is clear till now, right? So... Yes, sir. Sir, V1 equal to VTH, na? V1 is equal to VTH, yeah. But we further simplify that. With, that's why I'm writing V1. You can write VTH as well. Okay, sir. You are correct. V1 is equal to V2. But you will not be given with VTH. You will be given with, you know, input voltage. That, that is why V1 is very important here. You can straight away proceed with V1 as the input voltage. And these are all in phase values. Okay, V1 is in phase value. Okay. okay. So, um, before... Uh, seeing other concept of maximum slip and all you know, torque speed characteristics, I want to discuss some uh, gate problems here. So let me just take those problems. Then... Yeah, so I hope you are able to see the problem. Yes, sir. Yeah, so this problem was asked in gate 2017. Just a second.
Yeah, here a star connected 12.5 kilowatt, 208 volt line, uh, which is the line value of the voltage, right? It is not phase value, 208 volt. Three phase 60 hertz, a squirrel cage induction motor has following equivalent circuit parameter. Okay, these are the equivalent circuit parameters, R1, R2, X1, X2. So it is in terms of, you know, simplified equivalent circuit. R1 means a stator resistance and R2 is rotor resistance, X1 is a stator leakage reactance and X2 is rotor leakage reactance. Now, we, here also we are neglecting sent branch in equivalent circuit. The starting current we need to find out for this motor when connected to 80 volt of the line voltage value. Okay, so you need to provide me some hint to proceed with this particular problem. So uh, for the starting current, see, uh, current expression will always be same, right? As we calculated, uh, V1 divided by R, R1 plus R2 square, R2, R2 by S by square, whole square plus X1 plus H2 square. Okay. Now, the thing is, we need to find out this is starting current when, it, when the motor is connected to 80 volt of line value, right? So, uh, the thing is, uh, for different value of voltage, we will have, you know, change in frequency. So, basically, uh, first, we will have these resistances are fixed. So R1 plus R2 will be fixed, that is 0.3. And since we are dealing at a starting, so we can uh, consider S is equal to 1. So far, I hope you are following. So we can write R1 as 0.3 and R2 as 0.3. So this will be 0.6. Now, about X, X1 and X2, they are dependent on frequency. So initially the frequency was 0 0.41 and 0 0.41 x1 is 0.41 i'm oh, sorry x1 plus x2 will be 0 0.41 plus 0 0.41 as given in the problem so it will be 0 0.82 right and this 82 was at 60 at, hertz. yeah at 60 hertz at 60 hertz. Now, what, why I am emphasizing on 60 hertz? Because since voltage is reduced, hence frequency need to be reduced to maintain the, you know, V by F control, which is standard, to maintain the rated flux, right? And he, hence here, X will be directly proportional to frequency. Is there any doubt in this statement? I can explain. No, sir, no doubt. Okay. So now, since voltage has been reduced by how much time? Uh, 208 by 80. Right? So it is... Uh, so 2.6 times. 2.6 times. But 2.6 times is equal to 208 by 80. Okay. However, the frequency is reduced by three times as we can see in the problem. Right. So, you might be knowing there is a difference between V by F and E by F. E by F is what? That, you know, that inaccuracy is coming because of the approximation. Since if you do not consider, you know, any sent branches, 
that is why there will be difference between e by f and e by n so e by f what will happen you have to consider the voltage across this magnetizing interface where is it across this this vth whatever voltage will be induced here that will be e but since we are we want our simplified calculation we want voltage from input side that is why there is some discrepancy this voltage will not be equal to e1 always that is why here in this particular problem though you, even if you do not know there is no problem in solving this particular question but if you know then you can know that v by f has not been you know in directly proportional to whatever provided in the problem so voltage is reduced by 2.6 times but frequency has been reduced by 3 times so 60 by 20 that is 3 so since it is directly mentioned so we have to consider the reactance according to 20 hertz so at 60 hertz x1 by x2 right so sorry uh, both are same but 0.273 ohm sir x1 plus x2 okay 60 divided by 20 so x2 will be Three, sir. Ah, uh, point two by six, so one by three. One by three into point eight two, right? So how much did you tell me the value? Zero point two seven three. Zero point two seven three. Yeah. X so one I plus x two. X one plus x two equal to zero point two seven three. X one plus x two at twenty hertz. Zero point two seven three. Okay, these are just the. I am, uh, you know, uh, indicating it by dot just to differentiate between both of the values. So it is point two seven three. Now you can plug in this value of point two seven three here, and you will get the answer of a starting point. So V1 is now 80 volt, right? And that is line. So you uh, have to check. And it is a star or delta, a star connector. So 80 by by root 3 divided by 80. R1 plus R2 is 0.6. Plus x one plus x two is point two seven. I will check. So how much will it be? Sir, seven. Seven. Are you sure seven? Sir, seventy point zero three amps. Seven zero. Seventy point zero three amps. Yeah. So seventy point zero. So option C is very close to seventy. So option C will be correct, right? so why did i take this particular problem to you know to demonstrate the difference between what what will happen when we just go ahead with assumption of thevenin voltage is equal to input voltage so that is why these differences appears right it is since v by f we consider every time but this is not direct that ratio is not uniform throughout because But if you see E by F for both the cases, it will be three. But V by F is two point six. So that discrepancy occurs in the induction motor calculation when you simplify the equivalent circuit number. But in gate they will specify they will not take you you know in so much detail because it will consume so much time. But you should keep this concept in your mind. Okay. Any doubt in this particular problem? Uh, sir, sir x is directly pro proportional to frequency uh, from x l equal to j omega l in this exactly. expression. Exactly. Okay, sir. Okay, so let me take uh, one more problem.
Yeah, so this problem is also based on uh, equivalent circuit of induction motor. This problem was asked in gate E2015. So here you are given with you know pulse edge equivalent circuit of a two pole three phase induction motor operating at 50 hertz. Air gap voltage VG, you know, across magnetizing inductance just um, before we saw. Across the magnetizing inductance is 210 volt, which is RMS value. Slip is given 0 0.05. We need to calculate the torque produced by the motor. Okay. So, torque produced by the motor. What will be the expression of that? Three V one square uh, V one square R two by S. Exactly three V one square R two by S divided by oh, divided by omega S. Omega. Yeah. Omega R omega I. by S. S. Exactly, exactly. So just we discuss that expression yeah. we will apply. So let me write the expression. Torque is equal to nothing but divided by three V one square. But here should we take V one or V G? V S or V G from this circuit? V G. Exactly, right. Because uh, so V1 uh, equal to uh, two, uh, yeah, go ahead. 210, no, sir. V1 is equal to two, VG, VG. yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, VG and V1 equal. equal. Yeah, VG. so here at the place of V1, you have to take VG because ultimately, if you are not ignoring this parallel branch inductance, then you have to take this value, VG, right? Whatever the voltage, even if VG was not provided, if you had been given with the value of VS, you need to compute the value of VG from voltage division rule and the value of equivalent Thevenin impedance. Then you can proceed. If in the problem it is mentioned that you cannot ignore parallel branch inductance or magnetizing inductance, okay? So the torque induced will be C V G square divided by omega S R1 plus R2 by S square plus X1 plus F2. Okay, we just plug in those values and this V G is the uh, phase voltage and this is RMS, so you can straight away take the value of 210 here. So now let me plug in 3 into 210 square. Omega S will be nothing but 2 pi. Uh, sir, in numerator uh, R2 by S, yeah, yeah, you yeah, forgot. Yes, I forgot. Sorry, thanks a lot. Into R2 by S, so R2 is. 0 0.05 divided by S is also 0 0.05, so it will be 1. Omega S value will be how much? So here we need to calculate omega S and after that, uh, let me take R1 plus 120 R2. by P from this expression. N is equal to 120 by P. Exactly. So how much that value? So see one thing. If you are solving get problem, just keep your mind open. Here this expression r2 by s divided by r1 plus r2 by s here r1 should be you know thevenin equivalent resistance right it will not what will you take the value of r1 uh, sir 
सर जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री सेवन प्लस जीरो पॉइंट टू वन आई प्लस जे जीरो पॉइंट टू वन जीरो पॉइंट जीरो थ्री सेवन प्लस जे जीरो पॉइंट टू वन राइट यस सर ओके दिस इज नाउ जे टी एच नाउ यू कैन से दैट दिस at the place of r1 we have to use this rth and at the place of x1 we have to use xt okay and omega s will be you know 2 pi ns by 60 and ns is 128 by p so let me calculate omega s so omega s is 2 pi 60 into 120 frequency is 50 divided by 2 pole right Yeah. Okay. So, fifty, fifty, fifty. So it is hundred pi. Then perfect. Now we have JT H and omega S. Now we can go ahead with the calculation of torque induced. So three VG was how much? VG was two hundred ten. Into two hundred ten square into R two by S, which is zero point five into zero point five divided by omega S is hundred five. Now R one plus R two by S. So R one no, not R one now. R T H plus R two by S. So R T H is zero point zero three seven. Plus R two dash by S is one square plus X one plus X two square X T H plus X two square so X two is point two two and X T H is point two one so point two one plus point two two I hope you are following so this value will give you the induced torque. Okay, and that value will be three into 
210 square into 1 divided by 100 into 5 into 1.037 square plus 43.43 square So how much you are getting? 334 meter meter you are you getting? I think it is not in the option. Is this correct the value of JTH? Yes, it is Did anyone calculate the value of induced stock? Find the value of JTH. Hmm. Okay, six point five. Uh, sir, three thirty four point one five three. Yeah, I'm also getting that value. I think there might be some mistake in calculation of JTH. Uh, okay, so for this kind of circuit, if, uh, let me... What we can do if um, JTH calculation is a bit complex, then what we can do uh, yeah. So for this thing only uh, RTH you can directly take as you know, from Okay, so let me write the expression of JTH first, then it will make some sense. It is JXM into R1 plus JX1 divided by R1 plus J. Now, uh, to get, you know, close to our options, since we have calculated 374, 334, right? 334, which is not close to any of the options. It means there is some mistake in calculation of getting it, right? So in such cases, what you can do, you can immediately approximate, okay? And you can, as we have considered that XM is greater than X1, so XM plus X1 will also be greater than R1, right? So in this way, what we are doing, we are eliminating the value of R1 and we will get the value of RTH is equal to R1 into XM divided by X1 plus XM square. And FTH would be equivalent to this one okay so with these values uh, with these values of equivalent resistances you, you can proceed with that but 
we do not need to do these many things at the first go. Why? Let me tell, tell you how we could have easily solved this problem within 30 seconds. The, the whole purpose behind giving this value of dg, which you guys could not be able to find, that if this vg is given, you could easily calculate i2, isn't it? The whole purpose of giving the value of vg is giving you the value of i2. And torque induced will be what? i2 square r2 by s. Sorry, this is power, right? Air gap power or mechanical power. Sorry, this is will be mechanical power. Are you getting it? Uh, this mechanical I2 you can easily calculate from this circuit, right? Yes. And torque will be mechanical power divided by total speed. That's all. So, if you calculate this value of power here, to calculate power, we need I2. So, first let us calculate the value of I2. I2 will be how much? Two hundred ten volt divided by R two by S. R two is zero point zero five. S is also zero point zero five. So it will be one plus J point two two. Okay. So it will come out to be you know, two hundred five angle minus twelve point four two. So you have the value of I two magnitude as well as the angle. Now, TG is how much? Air gap power is I2 square R2 by S. 205 square 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.05. It will be nothing but how much? 205 square, it will be 42,025 watts. Okay, are you following? Now, torque induced is PAG divided by omega s. So, omega s we have already calculated that is 100 point, I guess. 100 point. And PAG we have already. So, 42025 divided by 100 pi. So, it will be 133.76 Newton meter. Okay, and this power PG is okay. Three I two square. Oh, we we missed the factor of three. So, 3 will be multiplied everywhere. Into 3, it will be 401.3 Newton meter. And okay, now we can see, we can check the options. 400. Yeah, so option C is perfectly matching with what we have calculated. So the purpose of doing this problem that, you know, is you should not follow unified approach that we remember this expression we will apply everywhere. See the problem and choose what is the best way to solve that problem. So the whole purpose of giving the value of VG was to simplify your all the calculation because get will never want to for you to invest so much time to solve just one problem.
it should be get solved in one or two minutes. Okay, any doubt in this problem? No, sir. Okay, so uh, one last problem I will take. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this problem was asked in gate 2017. Uh, three phase, four pool, 400 volt, 50 hertz, a square cage induction motor is operating at a slip of 0 0.02, speed of rotor flux in mechanical radial per second, sensed by a stationary observer, is closest to which value is given in the option. So, uh, if uh, synchronous speed is ns what will be the speed of rotor flux in r in r is the rotor speed and if rotor is rotating at n r so mm. basically ns into 1 minus s yeah ns into 1 minus s right n r is equal to ns into 1 minus s. so this is the value of rotor but what will be the value of rotor flux? Will it be the same of NR? No, sir. Rotor oh. flux will move at the same speed as the sir, field flux. Exactly. Rotor flux will move at the same speed with the field flux. So it should be equal to NS, you are saying. Yes, sir. Yeah, exactly. Uh, sorry. Uh, my screen work somehow. No, sir. Your screen is not visible. Your OS is coming clearly. Sir, screen so, is not visible. Sir. Yeah, sorry, sorry. I, I just one second. Yeah, now I hope it should be visible. Yeah. So the thing is, to produce torque, as I think Neeraj uh, answered that, to produce torque, uh, rotor flux should move at the same speed with RMF, rotating magnetic field, or the synchronous speed. So, Rotor flux a speed should be equal to synchronous speed and synchronous speed is what? A stator magnetic field, right? Or a stator flux. It will be better to call it a stator flux. Then only unified torque can produce, right? So the speed of rotor flux should be equal to ns and we need in terms of radian per second in mechanical so omega is equal to nothing but 2 pi ns by 60 and ns is nothing but 157 oh 157 you got uh, just let me frequency 50 and 40. so 2 uh, to 250 pi, 50 pi is 157. Exactly, that is correct. So 157 radian per second will be the answer for this particular problem. Okay. <coughs> so I hope you are aware with the relative speed of induction motor. So this problem was just to check the concept of relative speed of rotor. You know, uh, rotor lags behind the stator with you know the value of SNS. But rotor flux should move at the same speed of a stator flux so that our flux can be, so that our torque can be, torque can be induced and that should be a stationary. So, uh, okay, so that was about that. Uh, should we solve a problem based on power, which was asking gate 21? Quickly, it will try to solve it. We have discussed the concept of power flow, right? So, it will, it should not take much time. Mm.
सर हाउ यू कैन ड्राइव दिस एक्सप्रेशन ओमेगा इक्वल टू टू पाई एन एस डिवाइड बाई सिक्सटी ओके सो सी ओमेगा इक्वल टू इलेक्ट्रिकल फ्रीक्वेंसी इज व्हाट दिस लेट मी लेट मी जस्ट इफ एन एस इज नथिंग बट वन ट्वेंटी एफ बाई थ्री सो इफ यू प्लग इन दोस वैल्यू टू पाई बाई सिक्सटी into 120 f by p so that thing is 60 into 2 so 2 by f into 2 by p so omega which is radian per second omega is equal to 2 phi a, 2 pi f you know right omega is equal to 2 pi f it is very common expression yes sir okay now if we have certain number of poles and we want in terms of uh, electrical or mechanical so since in the problem it was said that we need to find in terms of mechanical this frequency is if will be electrical and if you just go ahead with 2 pi f that will be your electrical frequency but to find out the mechanical frequency what we do omega mechanical is what omega electric into 2 by p or anything anything you convert from electrical to mechanical or mechanical to electrical there is a term comes in the picture that is p by 2 or 2 by p that depends on the you know uh, in one entire Uh, rotation how many poles it is covering so there will be four flux loops and that determines the four poles right and to complete one mechanical rotation it will complete four electrical rotation within this machine right you understand the concept of mechanical and electrical that if uh, there is four such flux loops are there and one loop is completed it means from this point to this point one electrical loop is completed but only one by fourth of mechanical loop is completed right so that is why there is this factor 2 by p and that 2 by p we multiply to get mechanical speed so does that answer your question Yes, sir. Okay, great. So uh, we have discussed about the power flow diagram. We have this problem. It was asked in Gate Twenty Twenty One, which is very recent. Uh, the power input is given, right? And that is forty kilowatt. Rotor speed is nine seventy five RPM. Five hundred volt, fifty hertz, six pole, three phase induction motor. A stator losses are given one kilowatt. It includes copper loss, coal loss, friction, and windage losses are two point zero two five kilowatt. We need to find out the efficiency of the machine. So, efficiency means output by input. Right. Now. how quickly we can calculate the output power and input power that will determine the you know how quick you can solve this particular problem so power input is given 40 kilowatt isn't it we just need to find out the power output so how quickly you can find out the output power that depends on you so what approach you should follow to calculate output power very quickly so input power is given a stator losses if you reduce from that you will be ended up with air gap power so 40 minus 1 that will be 39 so we come to air gap level 39 kilowatt now output power sorry mechanical power is what pg into 1 minus s but s is not given right but you can calculate isn't it S will be N S minus N R by N S. 
So NS will be thousand RPM for this particular configuration. One twenty F by P. You can apply. NS is equal to one twenty into fifty by six. So twenty thousand RPM. Thousand minus nine seventy five divided by thousand. We will get this value of slip is equal to point zero two five. Okay. Now, for calculation of mechanical power, air gap power is thirty nine kilowatt. One minus zero point zero two five. It will be equal to how much? Thirty eight point zero two five kilowatt. So we are done with mechanical power. To get at the output level, we just need to uh, reduce frictional and windage losses from mechanical power. Frictional and windage losses are provided in the problem. That is two point zero two five. Okay, sorry. So thirty eight point zero two five minus two point zero two five kilowatt. Output power is thirty six kilowatt. So we are done with output power. Now we just need to divide it for efficiency. Thirty-six divided by forty into hundred percent. So nine, ten, ninety percent efficient. So this motor will be ninety percent efficient. So let us see the option. So option C will be the correct option. Any doubt in this particular problem? Okay. No, so sir. Okay, great. So yeah, will I? Uh, I will upload this video and PDF on YouTube. So yeah, so I hope you might have understood that how to proceed and how to handle a gate problem in most simplest form. Uh, in next lecture, we will continue from here and we will also see some more problem based on induction motor. And I also feel and I, I also faced difficulty when I was studying induction machine for first time in solving gate problems. It is the I think a bit complicated topic in electrical machines compared to all the machines because of the slip. The slip creates all the confusion. Otherwise, in synchronous machine, everywhere it is in synchronism. You do not need to bother about a speed. Everywhere it will be NS synchronous speed. But here, when to take NR, when to take NS, and what the speed, what mechanical power, what, and that is all dependent to slip. So that makes it bit complicated. But once you understand the concept, it will be easy. So I hope I I will be able to uh, clear the doubt and solve your problem. So let us meet on the next Friday uh, from here, and I will upload this. Okay, thank you for attending. Have a good night. Bye bye. Good night, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.